Hey everybody, Christy Glass here. I'm in my car on my way to an adventure in the Bronx with Alex of Alex Creates. He was on Manch a couple of seasons ago and now we're coming back to have a studio tour. He has branched out from fiber to pottery. He's also doing a scarf collection and I'm gonna ask him about it today. I don't think I know the details off the top of my head, but my daughter, the one you don't know so well, my oldest, crocheted this scarf. She held several strands of cotton together and crocheted it. And I am going to donate that to Alex today. So I'm excited to bring him that and get a tour of his studio. And I'm going to bring you along. Let's go. Hi, Alex. Hello. I have something to give you. Ooh, I'm going to give you two. For Thank your scarves. You. How many do you have so far? For, um, we did them already. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. I thought you were like... <laughs> <laughs> That's the pile of <laughs> lake scarves. <laughs> I thought you were, like, you had like five and you're like, I'm collecting till I have 5,000. That's I what mean, I thought. We were collecting until we had, what was it 200, I think was what they And it went like that? Like that? Yeah. We went to two, I think we got to 217. <laughs> I'm a really big jerk. <laughs> We got a lot. So are you starting over then? Good. Um, Look, you're I starting be, over. Yeah, I'm going to be doing um, scarves next winter. Okay. Okay. Well, you know uh, what? Not scarves, hats. You These could, you, you, okay, you can yarn bomb it. You have permission to yarn bomb okay. mine. Yarn bomb. Mother, oh, build, others build, are build, nicer. I'll on top of it. This, yeah. This is what Shelly can set me. That is so beautiful. I'm like, um, do I have to give it away? I know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you missed the deadline, Shelly. Oh, Shelley. you missed the deadline, Shelly. Oh. It's going to live up on the rack now. Are you want to do a tour? Yes. You have so many things in here. This is how you know you've reached Alex Creates. He has a crochet ice cream here. And then pop on in. This is a nice artist space. Is it only artists? Um, yes and no, it's mainly artists, but there's also like event spaces upstairs. Um, a lot of people manufacture stuff. I can hear some, we'll hear some there's hammers. A, there's, yeah, there's carpentry. there's right there. <laughs> um, yeah. that's a television show next door. What? Channel, yeah, wow. it's a Dominican television show. Oh, cool. Well, this is a really nice, unexpected little spot off the yeah. beaten path. Because it looks very industrial outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, so take us on. There's more buildings too, because when I was looking around, I shopped at a different spaces around here too. Oh. So it's kind of interesting how like they all look super industrial, like kind of like dead and boring. Yeah. But it has like full of color. Yeah. Yeah. And then you you make it your own. Okay, yeah. so introduce us because you haven't been on Christie Glass in a couple years, right? Mm hmm. Because you were one of the first manchers. Okay, so who are you? Um, so I'm Alex Creates, also known as Alex Alexander <laughs> Reynoso. People usually do that the opposite, but whatever. Um, so I knit, crochet, spin, weave, throw pots, paint. I'm just an artist and I do all the things all the time. Um, but this is my studio space. I started out dyeing yarn in my kitchen at home and now I have my own dedicated kitchen corner with a vet and everything. Um, that's the shop corner. So let's get, I mean, let's get detailed. Let's dig in. Where, where do we start? So this is my baby. You just got back, actually. I just got so back tell from us doing what you're... a demonstration on knitting machines mm -hmm. at uh, the school at Columbia. Mm -hmm. um, they, have a, they have a project, a week long project based curriculum where they integrate all their grades and pick a topic. And I the knitting instructor followed me on Instagram as a customer of mine and reached out to me for me to give her a demo. And what do you teach these kids about a knitting machine and how do you incorporate it with hand knitting or not? So they were all, they all, they were all knitters. All the kids were all knitters. So they all knew how to, they were all doing garter actually. So I just showed them like the other way of knitting. Here's a different way. There's a machine, look how quick it is. This is how our garments are made. Because mm -hmm. um, they were just actually with Amanda yesterday at um, Queen's Farm and they learned like the farming aspect of mm -hmm. it. So I'm like, here's the machine part. This is my spinning wheel. This is how I do it. This mm -hmm. is a different aspect. Yeah. Um, and I dye yarn too, so I just showed them all that. What kind of questions did they have for you? Um, they were asking me a lot of questions about how I like get inspiration for the colorways, for the names. Um, and then they kind of went on a tangent and they were like, in love with the machine, yeah. had like a million machine questions. Yeah, I was very fascinated when I saw my first demo of a of a knitting machine. Also, it's and really interesting. Yeah, I'm like, oh, they just knitted thirty stitches. Oh, look, sixty. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is math too. Yeah. 
then, oh, then, we do, then we did math on how like um, getting paid a living wage. So like, why should I charge forty dollars? If someone just wants to pay, uh, why should I charge myself? Why should I charge forty dollars an hour as opposed to forty dollars per scarf? Mm -hmm. um, and that also turned into a whole math situation for them. Yeah, so many people, even not like not even just kids, don't understand how expensive a hand it is because mm -hmm. of the time it takes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. um, this is your to-do list. This is my to-do list. My project. Um, Boards. Yeah. Um, when I have random ideas, I have to like write them down instantly, so that goes onto that. I like. I've overspun my brain very much. Yeah. It's, I think we all feel that way. And these are what are these like samples? Those of? are samples of either like this is a machine it sample and it turned into a hat. Mm -hmm. um, this is a scarf pattern I'm pin thinking about. Mm -hmm. This right here is actually this and this. Yeah. Barbie glove? Um, it's this one right here. What? Yeah. You can make it that tiny? And then, what in the world? So now I have to machine at the sleeve because I'm crocheting everything else. Um, so this. And so is this for you? This is, yes, it's for me. It's a pattern I'm working on, which is what I want to work on more now, which is designing and ombre yarn instead of like spreading myself out so thin, which was my issue recently. It's like spreading yourself out <laughs> so thin, meaning... Um, I was dying with too much yarn. I also want to, like, fabricate for artists. I want to do what I love more, and it's not dying a crap ton of yarn for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're finding that. That is that is the exact <laughs> thing that happens in your early 20s, is that you just sort of figure out, this is what I love, this is what mm -hmm. I don't love. And I, was like, we... I started off spinning yarn, and then I'm like, oh, people want my yarn. Let me dye yarn instead. Mm -hmm. And then I'm doing it for the money. I'm not really enjoying it. Yes. So see? I'm going back to like just spinning yarn because that's really what I want to do. And you guys want ombre yarn? I'll make ombre yarn and I'll design for it. Um, okay. Yeah. I like switch, that. Switch things up. Okay. So this is your little retail corner. This is your retail corner. And you just expressed that dyeing yarn isn't bringing you as much joy. So what is the future of this dyeing corner? So the dyeing corner is going to be mainly ombre capes mm -hmm. and ombre sock duos. There's that. Ooh, I'm, this is my favorite one. What's that? Only? Radioactive grapes, right? That's right. Radioactive. And then this is the sock duels Where's up the sock here. Duels? Okay. Oh yes, this I is bought spring one of these flame. at Lion Brand. They oh have yeah. Studio. Mm -hmm. it's like then, a trunk show. Of yeah. Course, yeah. The week long trunk show. And then this was my Vogue colorway. Cool. Um, and then these went up into uh, socks. Yeah. Like yeah. Show that because people don't always get it. So they look kind of like the same skein, but they actually change. Yeah, yeah so it starts or black or it starts blue, mm -hmm. and then it switches over and fades into yeah. something else. That's so cool. Um, That's Susan really cool. B. Anderson just bought that. She bought that one. She's, she like oh. knitted a sock within a day. She's such a yeah. fast sock knitter. And the way she did it, she it was this same exact colorway. Yeah. She put the heel in black and oh. everything else. Yeah, like you've never seen someone do it that way. Oh, Which cool, so Susan B. Anderson. But she did it like within a day. I'm like, you just got this yarn like two days ago. Yeah. And these are your yarn bombs. Did you save these or are these extras? Yeah, so the, I saved these. These are up maybe four years, three or four <gasps> years. So they I, were? I and take them off, wash them, put them back up in a different spot. And I found that around like the third year, they kind of get dull and kind of like crunchy mm -hmm, almost. So mm -hmm. I saved this one. Um, and which is the same thing I did with the ice cream outside. I was up for two years and I'm like, I want to keep it before someone like snatches mine it. Mine gets stolen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. mine gets stolen, cut or burnt. Or taken down, yeah. Yeah, that's the fun part. Yeah. Um, that's another, that's another yarn bomb that yeah. I did. That looks like an orifice. Yeah. Of some sort. It was supposed to be more for tear and I was just getting lots of orifice comments. So. Yeah. So, but I think, <laughs> but I can see why like, so you I wouldn't won't. get that. Yeah. But, oh, that was that. but that's a nice tear. I like it. <laughs> I like that tear. Does it, look, does it remind you of a tear? Or... Oh, and wow. I'm glad it wasn't in a different color. Because the blue helps me think it's more like a tear. <laughs> Blanda! Those are samples of how my ombre yarn knits up. Yeah. That's a hand spun yarn I spun up at um, Stitches West. So that's actually a collab between uh, Frost Yarn, um, Nicole Frost, and she knitted it for me, that's all wool she dyed, and then I spun it up super quick on the oh. And this is some of yours? Yeah. <gasps>
So do you spin exclusively in this space or do you also do it at home? I also do it at home. I'm actually taking one of my wheels back home. It's just another, like I missed working from home. Yeah. And now that I have a studio space, like I've missed just waking up and just getting to work. Totally. So I have, I'm bringing my, because we just did a spinning, um, spinning event last weekend. So my wheel, both of my wheels were here. So I'm taking one back home. Cool. Yeah. What happens this here? One. This is weaving. Amanda and I are making pillows soon. Mm. Um, so we are going to be warping this loom up with some brown or black or gray, like a neutral color mm -hmm. commercial yarn, mm -hmm. and then just fill it up with hand spun and make mm. hand spun pillows. That's going to be gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, what's happening on this wall? So this is my art wall. Yeah. So um, people send me stuff, give me stuff. Like mm -hmm. this was done by um, Joe and Lorna from Knits for Life. So they yarn bombed or yeah, oh, they yarn bombed my logo. Oh, cool. That was a project for school. The other logo up there. The, with the wire? With the wire. Mm -hmm. That was from my de design class. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Rose Moo. The, the banner up there that says nurture the fire inside mm -hmm. she follows me on instagram and sent me that naomi um rag yeah um this was a deer that her family killed and um what? yeah like someone killed and they ate and she kept the skull and then yarn bombed it so this was like with her in london and she brought it over here she moved and then she was like i don't actually want this do you want it for your studio i'm like yes please give wow. it right yeah the bus sign i found it on the street it, that's a big, you don't realize how big they are. Yeah. And it was just on the corner. I'm like, you know what? This will look beautiful at the studio. Picked it up, drilled the hole, and that was it. I like that. Very cool. Now let's talk about these ribbons. Mm -hmm. Because. So that was the one you're touching. That was my first year at Rhineback. Okay, so tell the story because people, really people don't know. What am I looking at? So at Rhineback, there's a competition every year for spinning, uh, for speed spinning crochet knitting so they give you i think it's 15 minutes to spin crochet or knit um they supply the yarn or the wool and then whoever knits the most crochets the most or spins the most within that time frame wins first place second place and all that i think i was there for that one i think you were there for, for the first one this one yeah 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 that we're talking so I got about second place yeah because um, i was like cheering for you and you were disappointed you didn't I, get yeah, first because like, it was like it was like by a yarn and a half or totally. something. Totally. Like me and her were so close. But I beat her this year. You did. Because it was the same person. She was so happy. She was like, I'm so happy it was you that beat me. Yeah. I've been winning for like five years in a row. Yeah. So it was this one. Yeah, that's the one. That Look at the difference in the ribbons. Very <laughs> rude. And how do you decide like what you're spinning with? Like talk about the process. They supply it. Oh, so they, it's we all like... have the same exact wool. Um, so they usually, I think they get a sponsor or it's whatever like the county or this it's the wool of the year or something yeah it's usually something like that because mm -hmm. i remember last year it was corydale and the this year i forgot what it was yeah um so they supply that so they control that part and you can bring an electric wheel you have to have a wheel oh you bring your own wheel you have to bring your own wheel mm -hmm. you can be electric mm -hmm. and then that's it do you, do you have a sense of what people perceive you to be when you walk into that mm -hmm. spinning. I love that. Because don't you think you're a little bit different from other spinners there? Mm -hmm. Not only because you're a guy. I didn't see a lot of guys spinning. It was two of us. There were two guys. Yeah. But you you have brown skin. Mm -hmm. You're from the city. I'm tall. <laughs> you're t like you're a big presence. Yeah. So do you feel that when pe when you walk in like I'm gonna beat you all. Like d no. I'm like, just like you're just I'm, one of the spinners. I'm, like, I'm sitting down I'm like let's do this. You totally are focused. Yeah. I remember that about you. So you haven't had any like bad feedback or anything? No. People acting Always weird around you? Yeah, that's Always good. Always encouraging, actually. I'm sure they're like shocked, like where did you learn yeah. to spin? They, they, they usually are so shocked they don't actually say anything. They're just like looking at like, I see pictures of people just like, what the fuck is he doing? What is this kid doing? What, how is he so good at this? Totally. Yeah. I love that you won first place. I am so happy. And I love that it says spinning bee, mm -hmm. like spelling bee. Okay, now what was this one? This is that fast. That was a crochet. Um, like speed crocheting? Speed crochet. I got tied with someone else. Um, how do they judge that? We, Just, de we counted the rows and then how many stitches you finish. Okay. Um, so we both got to the same exact row and stitch count, which is ridiculous. Ow. And then we so we the a green one, it was the second one, which this, is a spin off. Like not a spin off, but like what would you call it? Like overtime. <laughs> yeah, it was like five minutes or something. Like who spent it was less than five minutes. Yeah. Um but she beat me, so oh my yeah. Gosh. Like, how are you so fast? But I saw the way she was doing it, like 
she was just like a lot more looser. So I'm like, oh, it makes so much sense, but that would hurt my wrist. Oh, so you tied for first, and then and then we we battled. Out I to, see. To, yeah. And so that's how you ended up with second. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you you took a little glance at her technique. Yeah. Because I saw someone else was recording her video. Oh, yeah, because I was going to say, you can't look while you're doing yeah, it. Mm -mm. No, no, no. Because I have a daughter who's a swimmer, and if she looks back, I'm you're, like, no, yeah. that's slowing you down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you going to enter this year, 2019? Yes. What do you get? Both? Both of them, yeah. <gasps> I might even try and do the knitting one, but for the knitting, they use chopsticks. They do? I, I believe so. Why? No one knits like that. Right. I don't. I, no one knits like that, and I don't like wood needles. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of slowing me down. So I'm just gonna stick to the crochet. Okay. All right. What else do we have here? I have. I see a sewing machine and a carder. Yeah. So I card. I also tie dye the shirt I'm wearing. I tie dye. Oh, that is the best tie dye shirt I've ever seen. Thank you. So I do. I host tie dye workshops, which is what I'm doing you in about do? two or three weeks. So this whole box here is all plant fibers. That I'll be making dye stock very soon. Now, do you only dye with plant fiber? Uh, no, plant? I dye with wool, which is what all of these. I mean, you mean acid? Acid. Wait. Yes, I dye wool, but I dye with acid dyes. Oh, so plant this is for t shirts? Why? Cotton, viscose. It's better? Yeah, well, it requires a, diff a different dye technique and a different dye itself. I see. So yeah. this is specifically for cotton, and this is for and wool. And that's for wool, the ones on the wall. Okay. Um, I have these very cool color cards. Okay, wait. Okay, so these color cards. These color cards are by Nicole, <gasps> and I mentioned her earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and they all are by um, Dharma Trading. These are all their dyes. Mm -hmm. It just helps um, when people come to my classes to see what the dyes would look like. Yeah. Especially when I'm doing like tie dye or ombre workshops or something I also do. So people can see, oh, I want this color for the center of my scarf or my shirt, mm -hmm. and then I want this. So it's like super helpful. Yeah. I like showing people that. Now, Nicole, she came and did a dye class here, right? She did, she did. She taught two classes. We did a spinning workshop. We did a... Because she spins and dyes? She spins and dyes. Um, she mainly cards, like, Fiber for art yarn, um, which is why I, how I even got into knowing her, which is by uh -huh. buying fiber from her. I think that's what Amanda was talking about on our interview, right? Yeah. How she like would spend all her money on yeah, I mean, cross yarn. Her, Amanda and, and I kind of connected because of Nicole. Okay. And then realized we were connected in other ways too, which was really weird. Mm -hmm. um, this right here is how I write down all my dye recipes. Ooh. And I'll just show that the looks side. like my recipe book because it's like because I bring it out with the cooking, so it's just, it just like, gets why all did I laminate it? Yeah. Like why am I stupid? I just it's so gross. I'm starting to do that with recipes. I'm writing down <gasps> index cards, but it's yes. like because it just makes a lot more sense to just bring out an index card and like bring out your <laughs> tablet or your laptop. Totally. But now it's like getting like this side has soy sauce on it. And yes. <laughs> Or mystery liquid. Yeah. Sure. I was like, is it soy sauce? Was it actually so what's sauce? happening here? Um, so that's some ombre cakes, some worsted ombre. Mm -hmm. to, that's waiting for color. Yeah. So it's waiting for its second batch. Yeah. This is a vent that I asked the landlord to build. Nice. Since there aren't any windows in this studio space, yeah. um, and I don't want to dye fumes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so what about your heat? You're using hot plates? Uh, yeah, I'm using hot that? plates, um, water. I fill it up in that cart. Uh-huh. Go to the bathroom, fill up those tank, fill up that, fill oh. up the dye. Yeah. Because there's no sink in this space. Yeah, I noticed. Um, I love these carts. They're the they best. They're amazing. And now there's like an ugly hunter green one at Costco, and I want the blue one to come back. Yeah, I like the blue. I have a black one. I really like it. Ooh. Yeah. It's fine. It's good. Okay, what about this? What is this? Um, so that's do. my, I got that off Amazon. They're sweater racks, sweater drying racks. What? And I use it to dry wool, which <gasps> is why it's like stained yellow. You guys, a sweater drying rack? And I th what? think it only comes with three, and I might have bought two of them, but I have a huge tower, so if I'm washing fleece all day, I could just fill this up with wool. That's amazing. Which is what this is here, because we got, um, Couple of fleeces when we went to Boston, so I have Gotland washed here, Whoa. which is super soft. This is a Swedish Swedish breed of sheep that um, is illegal to import, so right. we can only import their sperm. So that's love that breed. This is mohair from California that I've washed. And you saw, I saw in your Insta stories the other day, you found some goat poop. Yep, this was from this one. So <laughs> it wasn't this bad. is that common that you find poop in your fleeces? Yeah. 
Yeah, because the animal eats, the animal poops. It's been on them for at least six months, if not a year, if it's super long and curly. So, so their poop just gets in there? Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> I didn't this realize it was such a dirty process. This is some merino that I'm going to card up into like scrap yarn oh my bats. Oh goodness, look at that. So soft. So and you, your brain is just full of creativity. Mm -hmm. That feels crunchy. Wow. It is crunchy. What is, is it this? supposed to be? Is this oh, this washed? is Wensleydale. Um, it wasn't washed well. It needs to be washed better. Yeah. Probably, there's probably still some soap in it actually, which is why it's crunchy. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like when you're a kid, when they're first starting to wash themselves, and you're like, I need to check that <laughs> shampoo job you did. And you're like, what are these bubbles? Oh, You've been out of them all off. Oh. Well, then you just get them back in the tub. Like, you didn't rinse. When you were growing up, like mm -hmm. baby Alex, were you creative? Were you having all the ideas? Yes. My were you an artist? Or did this, has this sort of bloomed in you as you've come of age? Like, you know what I mean? Because I yeah. feel like it's exploding for you. Yeah, um, it's, I'm coming more into it. It mm -hmm. was something everyone else around me saw, but I never, um, like, accepted it for myself or saw it for myself. Why is that, you think? And I how didn't see can... money in it. I was mm -hmm. growing up, like, you have to do, like, coming up from an immigrant background, you have to go to school to make money and, like, just be good in life. Mm -hmm. Not like, it's never to like do something you actually enjoy. Um, so I'm like, all right, I gotta go to school for this. Like when we first interviewed, you were like, you should go to school for art. That later that year, I switched over for uh, to fine arts and ceramics because I had to take another. Wait, are you like, getting, that next are you giving semester. me credit for your career path? A little bit. <laughs> A little bit. I'm like later that I'm like, I really don't want to do accounting again. Yeah. Like, I had to take another accounting class. Yeah. Like I. Past that class with like the skin on my teeth. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to do this again. Or for the rest of my life. Yeah. Well, well, I still kind of got to do it for the rest of my life. Right, I'm but I mean. You're now. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm tired of quick. That's me. true. But, you know, like if that was totally stifling for you, that if there's no joy in it. And so, what is your school status? Are you still taking classes? I'm going back in the fall. Mm -hmm. I have to go back for one class. Um, but then I'll be done, get my associates in ceramics, and then decide what I'm going to do after that. Okay. Um, might want it. I'm interested in being like a CUNY ceramics professor. That would be so amazing there for aren't you. Any. <laughs> like well, there are, but they like they're kind of, they're all old. My ceramics teacher is amazing, yeah. but like she, her hours are getting cut off, and she's not that because she's old. Yeah. yeah, we need to replace them. And you love pottery. Yeah. Talk about that. I work at a ceramics studio now. I work at a ceramics studio that was on the same block my mom came when she went to, when she came from Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. um, and on that same block is where my parents actually met. Which is amazing, right? So, so I, cool. growing up, I would always see the ceramic studio, but it was it's pottery isn't cheap. No. So, yeah. So like we never we never afforded it. We could never afford it, and she, my mom had two kids, so yeah. it was like mm, put them both through this. Yeah. She just put us through karate, which was down the block and a lot cheaper. <laughs> She's like self defense. Yeah. Here's with karate. Mugs. Here's karate. Forget this mug. Forget this mug thing. Here. It's yeah. like horseback riding and yeah. pottery. <laughs> I'm like. No girls. My no, no, no. <laughs> she like, has horses and mm -mm. also have a studio. Mm -mm. <laughs> it's expensive. It's, yeah. So as I was going to school, I'm like, wow, I really like this. I really like this. Yes. And I see how much like it is to get equipment for. I'm like, oh. Yeah, even. I'm like, let's find a job in this. Right. Because yeah. it was, but I, I do love it. Um. And so, do, what do you see like next five years, ten years? Is it fiber? Is it pottery? Is it all? Like, what do you? Do you I have no idea. Me either. I can't answer that question <laughs> yeah, either. I have no idea. And I don't, I Who cares? don't want to have a plan for it right now yeah, either. Like, I just yeah. want to make both of them work right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm downsizing on yarn so I could do more pottery. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's what it is for the, in the next two years. Let's see what happens. Yeah. yeah. I love this idea of you being, this is what I see for you. Since, since, <laughs> <laughs> since I'm giving you some credit. Hold on. Since I had a little say in Alex's career path, which I agree with you. I do think it takes sometimes an adult that you, well, I'm not saying you look, looked up to me, but it, it, it takes an adult that you sort of respect and vibe with. Cause I'm, I got 20 years on you. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I could be your mother. I actually could. 
Um, you know, it sometimes takes an adult to, to point it out, even in small ways. Like, mm -hmm. I've had, I can think of two different women who I didn't even know that well, but I really looked up to, who just said the one thing that really encouraged me on my path. So I totally understand what yeah. you're saying. So what I see for you is, I, I think it would be awesome if you did that professor thing. Um, it's not a thing. It's, a, it's just an action. It's a, it's a big thing. I, I think that you would find so much joy in that. And then... This could be your your hobby that mm -hmm. you're so good at, and 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 I I sense that you would find a way to like incorporate the two somehow, like pottery yeah. and fiber, and I I just think that that sounds right. Just you know, in our check in our two years later check in, mm -hmm. I think that sounds right. I like it. And that's like I've speaking to my pottery professor and then my art history professor. They both came from two different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. My art history professor. Took her like twelve years to get a six, uh, eight year degree or something yeah. like that, and she, but like she was honest about it. Yes, and that's Which how life is. is. Life isn't linear. Yes. School isn't linear. So I'm just like, why not? I could still be a ceramics uh, professor. I could, and she explained to me yes. how like being within the same CUNY system, um, City University of New York, um, yeah. it helps you. They help you place. They help you find jobs. Yes, if you stick with them through the whole process. Yeah. Like, why not? I'm like, why not? I, yeah. I don't. I love the city, so yeah. why not? Yeah. yeah, and you have mentors now, mm -hmm. and and you're good at it, and I like this plan. <laughs> I like this non-linear plan. Um, what's, who's this sheep up here? Um, I did that in high school. Um, it was my senior project. I had a sheep, and a, a, a sheep, a cow, and a pig, because, you know, I was going to, I was going to go to school for agriculture, so yeah. farmer mine. I yeah. still kind of have a farmer mine, but... Like maybe urban farmer bar. Yeah. And then talk about how you connected with Amanda because Amanda is such a cool, inspirational young person. Um, also. We connected off Instagram. And then as we got to know each other more, we realized we both went to the same agriculture school. I went there her last year. So she was living off campus. Mm -hmm. We never really saw each other. Mm -hmm. But we have friends in common. And we're like, wait, how do you know her? How do you. Wait, you both, wait, you both went to Kobe? What? Yeah. Um, but we both like yarn. We're both brown people from the city that are into yarn and spinning wheels. Like, um, she started helping me last year to card bats for my website. Yeah. That's something I didn't really like. Yeah. And I ended up paying her to do that. So now she works for me to do bats. Yeah. Um. And so she comes in how many times a week? Right now she's taking a break. She's okay. tired of bats. Got it, got it, got it. <laughs> but before she was kind of coming in regularly. Yeah, regularly. Yeah. She has keys to the studio. Yeah. 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 Um. She's so fun. I sold her my first spinning wheel because she had a crappy one. I'm like, can you, I'm like, instead of buying another crappy one, yeah. why don't you take this one you've already used, yeah. starts you cheap, and then mm -hmm. you can make yarn. Yeah. Now she's, she's bought her, her own good wheel recently. Yeah, so good. Okay, so what do you have to say to other young brown people like you who are in the city? What do you want to say to them? Mm. About following their art and their passion. You can say it to the non-brown people too. Cause we're, to, yeah, all, we're all young. watching. Yeah, anyone that's young <laughs> to, to like look for people that look like you um, and don't, and just find different mediums of that same or different ways of people, different ways that people are using that medium. Try and see, like, just look, get very broad in your interest mm. within that medium. Be an explorer. Yeah, yeah, so like explore and see different ways people are using the same thing. Um, don't just stick to one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you go to these schools, do you do you have a sense that the kids are like pretty enthusiastic about seeing you do this and present that to, it, to them? Like um, this group was because the yeah. it, they they all chose to be in the knitting um, curriculum yeah. for that week, so they were all knitting. They yeah. were all into it, and they were just looking at farms and spinning yesterday. So they were they were very enthused by it. Were they a diverse group of students? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, race wise, gender wise, yeah. I think they're only two boys. Okay. Which makes sense. Most yeah. girls want to knit, I guess. Okay, um, so we need to make steps in that yeah. arena. But we are. We are. Look at me. This whole month is all men. Match. Right? Some women are not happy with me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. Um, but how about race? Um, it was very mixed. Good. Yeah, it was very mixed. That is okay. so cute. Oh, yeah. I was storying about this. Tell me about this pin. So it was a collab between um, Quaylin and I, mm -hmm. which his Instagram name is um, Porcolio. Yeah. And um, I dyed the yarn for it, and he designed the knitted pattern for that, and there's also a crochet pattern for that that cool. works with the kits. And it's a pin that flips up. Mm-hmm. So it actually says um, knit with 
and then it says hooker, and then when you flip it up, there's a skein of yarn as the braid. I love that. You can see it right here. Oh, here, yeah, let's do it. Hold on. And there's also different skin tones. Okay. Oh, cool. Right next to... Dominator! Oh, that's so cute. I love that. Okay, and then uh, for those the of you... The pin wall, because everything falls off of your back. Yes, the pin, <laughs> the pin wall. We are obsessed with pins, but then we lose them all. Now, tell me, this is your logo right here, and I don't, I can't remember if I asked you in the last match, but tell us why that is your logo. Boom, yeah. right, right here. Um, so I designed it in 2012. Around that year, I had two litters of rabbits back to back. So I had my, in my apartment, we had 14 rabbits. So that's kind of when my obsession for rabbits began, because I had so many of them. I'm like, I love these little creatures. <laughs> <laughs> They're so fluffy, and they were also like, um, and Angora uh, cross, so they're all super fluffy. I love them so much. Um, but that's how my, and around the same time I also started selling more hats and more scarves, so it, it developed a logo because I was using like a weird hybrid of like a Playboy bunny logo with like some random rabbit I found off Google. Mm -hmm. It wasn't working. I'm like, mm -hmm. let me make something else. So mm -hmm. that's where that combined yarn and my love for rabbits. Love it. And I Ran with it. Yeah. Okay, so you're not collecting scarves anymore. Are there anything else you, that you... people would want to know about that's on your radar as far as like the fiber arts community? Because um, you went to Stitches West. Yes, I'm not going. I don't think I'm going to any other show this year. No. But maybe we can. <gasps> I have classes. I have. I host yeah. workshops here. Yeah. So I have. I host workshops here in the studio. So I. You can learn how to tie dye shirts here. Also have ombre. Um, Dying workshop, so you learn how I dye ombre cakes. You could you leave home with two of your own, mm. um, and I also you can rent out the studio if you already know how to dye. You can take a weaving private. I have all those options on my website. Okay, so we go to the website. I'll put that underneath, and then I think it would be really cool if there was an audience when you did your spinning. Would you get nervous if a bunch of people were like, "Go, Alex, go, Alex"? No, they were doing that. At the, they were. Yeah, I think it was for the crocheting one, but yeah. Is that appropriate, or do people think we're we we are like out of I'm hand? Here for it. <laughs> I'm here for it. That'd be so funny. Okay, I'm gonna try to remember that because that would be so fun if we did that mm -hmm. at Ryan Beck. Chanting. Okay. Anything Moving else? Am I am I missing something? Anything else? Or did you knit these? Yeah. So. Or no crochet. I don't, I don't have that one. I don't have that pattern out yet, but I will be revisiting. This is my orilla shawl. It's all crochet. Wait. Say that. Say that again. Orilla. Okay. Which means um shore in Spanish. Mm -hmm. This is all crocheted out of a big magic knot uh -huh. cake, uh -huh. which I call chubby bunnies. Yeah. This is a hand spun scarf. Ooh. From tip to tip. Whoa. I was gonna put on my mambo yarn, so I need to add some tassels to it. Yeah, that definitely needs some tassels. And then that's the end of that. That's beautiful. Scarf. This is my. Oh yeah, because we haven't. Yeah. See. Oh. The crochet eyeball shawl, yeah, so right? The crochet eyeball shawl. Oh, people are gonna be excited about this. Which then inspired the um, earth seed pullover, which is the the one that's hanging up over there, because it was similar construction. Yeah. You see. The first one you showed us, right? Yeah. So yeah. Like, this is the top <gasps> yes. of that sweater. Yes. And then I just made it to wrap around. Yeah. These are all on Ravelry, right? Yes. This one's okay. on Ravelry. That one will be on Ravelry very soon. Okay. I'll put a link to that too. Yes. This is the scarf from Shelly Can. Mm-hmm. And then beautiful. this is another pattern of mine. It's using um, on the round yarn. And she's a dyer in Maine. She uses all U.S. grown wools and uh, Maine made Wait. You dyes. look like you have antlers right now. So just don't move. <laughs> <laughs> that, that needs to be the thumbnail. Yeah. Oh, look. Oh my gosh, that's so funny! <laughs> that needs to be the thumbnail. <laughs> I love it. This is like, uh, this is the hardest part of this what video. Is, what is? It's no, it's not. You're so tall. <laughs> that is not hard. You're you're just lucky you can use it. Right? Because not everyone could. You're tall that's enough. You can. Um, thank you for this lovely tour. Thank you I had for coming such a to good the Bronx. Time. I have seriously rescheduled this with Alex about 14 <laughs> times. <laughs> and I know last night he's like, you're coming tomorrow, right? I'm like, yes, I am. So it's not you. It's me. And I'm glad we can do it. <laughs>